Hi, I'm Kara Scott, and in this video, we're going to talk about odds and outs. I'm going to show you how to calculate quickly and easily what the odds are for making your hands, and why it's so important to know how to do this. When you're faced with an opponent betting into you, you need to be able to do some quick calculations on whether you should be putting your chips into the pot or putting your cards in the muck. Today I'm going to teach you the rule of four and two. It's a method that you'll use time and time again throughout your poker career. Without using a calculator, it's roughly 98% accurate and very simple to remember. So let's have a look at an example hand and do the math. We have the king and queen of hearts and we have one opponent who's holding a pair of nines. Okay, so pre-flop, the pair of nines are a slight favorite with a 52.2% chance of winning and our suited king-queen is 47.4%. Okay, so let's have a look at what the flop brings. Deuce of hearts, five of clubs, and ten of hearts. It's a great flop for us, but right now we're still losing as we don't even have a pair. So after the flop, you can see that we have four cards to a flush, which means there must be nine hearts left in the deck. Something else to remember is that it doesn't matter how many other players are at the table or what cards they're holding or what cards they've folded. The calculations always take place based on a 52 card deck minus the flop and your whole cards. We have more outs than just the flush, but for now, let's concentrate on the flush making our hand the winner. And to complete the flush, any one of the remaining nine hearts will have to come on the turn or on the river. Therefore, we have nine outs. Remember this definition of outs. The total number of cards that will improve your hand after all five cards of the board are dealt. The rule of four and two says after the flop, we take the number of outs, which is nine, and multiply that by four to give us the percentage chance of making our hand. So that's four multiplied by nine equals 36. So we have 36% chance of making our flush. So that's good, right? Well, later on we'll talk about whether or not we should be investing chips into the pot. Right now, we want to know if we don't make our flush on the turn card, what's the likelihood of hitting it on the river? So let's deal the turn card and see what it brings. Hmm, jack of spades. And the jack doesn't make our flush. So now we have four cards on the board with just the river card to come. So our chances of making the flush are most certainly reduced. And the way we use the rule of four and two to recalculate our percentage chance to hit that flush after the turn card is to simply take the number of outs, but this time multiply by two. So we still have nine cards to hit our flush and nine multiplied by two is 18, which is an 18% chance of the heart coming on the river to give us our flush. Easy, huh? So let's recap. After the flop, we multiply our outs by four, and after the turn, we multiply them by two. We had a 36% chance of making the flush after the flop, and that reduced to an 18% chance after the turn. But why is this important? Well, let's say after the flop, we have $20 in the pot, and we have just the one opponent, and he makes a bet of $5. So that now gives a pot total of $25. We have to put $5 into the pot to call, so the pot odds are 5 to 1. Simply, $25 divided by 5 is 5 to 1. And as a percentage, it's 20%. We've already seen that we have a 36% chance of making a flush, so as long as the percentage of making the hand is greater than the pot odds, we can call the bet. I want to give you an example that really drives home how important it is to not put your money into a pot when the odds are not correct. Imagine you're playing a game with dice, and I say to you, I'll give you three to one odds if you can roll a six in a single roll. You'd look at me like I was crazy. You know as well as I do that there are six numbers on a die, and therefore I should be offering you odds of five to one. So there's no way you would accept my offer of three to one. But if I offered you odds of eight to one that you would roll a six, you couldn't get your money out of your pockets fast enough. Well, it's exactly the same in poker. If the odds are not right, then it's not right to put your chips into the pot. That said, of course, you can put your money into the pot when the odds are not correct and you might win the pot. But if you keep making this fundamental error with the odds against you, in the long run, you can't possibly come out ahead. It's simple maths. There's something a little more in depth on this topic, and that's called implied pot odds. 
but that's for another video on advanced betting strategy. Pot odds are simply the ratio of the amount of money in the pot to how much money it costs to call. If there's $100 in the pot and it takes $10 to call, your pot odds are 100 divided by 10 or 10 to 1. If there's $50 in the pot and it takes $10 to call, then your pot odds are 50 divided by 10 or 5 to 1. Your outs are the number of hidden cards that might be dealt on the turn or the river that will improve your hand. Now let's take a closer look at our hand of king queen suited up against a pair of nines because we actually have a lot more outs than just the flush draw. Let's list our outs after the flop. So we have nine hearts as we've already said. Any of the three remaining kings will give us a higher pair than our opponent's two nines and any of the three remaining queens will also give us a higher pair. So 9 plus 3 plus 3 is 15 outs. Now remember the rule of 4 and 2. Multiply 15 by 4 and you get 60 or approximately a 60% chance of improving our hand by the time all five cards of the board are dealt. It's a combination of the odds of hitting on either the turn or the river. Of course, in gameplay, we would not know that our opponent was holding a pair of nines, but often we can take an educated guess from his previous actions pre-flop and his position in relation to the button and, of course, the way he played previous hands. One thing to bear in mind is that your outs won't always be clean, and by that I mean that some of your outs might also improve your opponent's hand, but for the sake of simplicity, we're going to ignore that for now. So let's move on to the turn card which is the Jack of Spades. We didn't hit our flush, but the Jack gives us even more outs. So let's list them again and recalculate. Nine hearts to make the flush, three queens and three kings to hit the higher pair, the nine of diamonds for a straight, and three aces for a straight. So that's now 19 outs. The four and two rule tells us that after the turn card, the multiplier is now two. So that's now 19 times two, which is 38. So we have approximately a 38% chance of making either of the two over pairs or one of two straights or making our flush on the river card. Let's deal the card and see what happens. Three of clubs, not really the card I was looking for. Let's deal the card and see what happens. Three of hearts, wouldn't it be great if we could do that in real life? The rule of four and two is so important and so easy. I want you to remember this checklist. Calculate your outs. Calculate the pot odds. If the outs percentage is equal to or higher than the pot odds percentage, then it's the right decision to call. It's that simple. Now go put it into practice. And thanks for watching.